Uh, yeah, I thought it was good. Um, good to see a lot of guys uh, get out there. Good to see some guys tackle that we haven't necessarily seen tackle a whole bunch. We needed to get some um, some more reps, especially with the younger guys uh, taking people all the way to the ground. I think our running backs are running real hard right now, so it's a it's a really good practice for us. Uh, also got us in some good situations, you know, some red zone work, uh, some stuff down by the goal line, uh, some third down situations, and I think the kids had a better understanding of those situations after scrimmage number one, after reviewing the film, moving on to scrimmage two. Yeah, it's not it's not good enough right now. Um, but in spring football, you don't get a ton of shots to tackle live to the ground. You know, we'll get a little bit more work in that, but we can definitely use the work throughout the rest of spring. And then as we move into fall camp, we can definitely use some more tackling work. Is there any way to offset the lack of live tackling? I think you just got to keep drilling it. You got to keep talking about it. You got to keep enforcing. Uh, you know, when we're in a tag off period or a thud period, you got to keep enforcing leverage. You got to keep enforcing angles. You got to keep enforcing body posture and where your eyes are at. So there's things that you can do to offset it, but you'll never completely offset the lack of a live tackle. Is there a position group or two where that's especially one of emphasis? Well, I mean, I mean, everybody across the board, but um, defensive backs and linebackers have the hardest tackles. You know, it's a lot more space. Leverage is, you know, much more important for those guys out in the perimeter. The D-line guys, you know, they kind of run around and put their big bodies on another body. Uh, you don't want to give them too much to digest as they're coming out of the stack. They need to keep the leverage in their gap. But those guys in the perimeter, nickels, linebackers, defensive backs have a lot of space to work with. So they got to be really, really sound in their tackling plan and their, their technique. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think the whole crew, you know, has has done a lot of good things, and um, you know, obviously, you know, Nash got some reps last year, and Colton Feast got a lot of reps last year, and the guys that haven't got as many reps, the Mosai Newsoms and Marquise Blacks and Ruquan and Jalen, those are the guys we need to continue to get a little bit more out of as we move forward. Yeah, I think, you know, Mo Sai has been in the in the system the longest, so I think he's the closest, you know, of getting in. But, you know, Ruquan does a lot of good things in practice. Marquise Black does a lot of good things in practice. Um, you know, even guys like uh, Herbeck and, and Schomer, those guys have just kind of come back. They had a little tweak in their injuries, but it's really nice to get those guys back and see them work. Yes, we've asked you about Jamari before, but since he's not here, just how has his spring gone, and is he kind of making that move that you drove uh, at this point? Yeah, and he's... It's different now for him because we're getting closer to coaching him like Garrett and Caleb or maybe Garrett and Caleb last year, whereas before it was get lined up and let's play with some technique and let's play really hard and really fast. And now we're able to correct some mistakes and he understands the system much better. Um, So he's coming along a lot just in those detail work. Yeah, I think all those guys have done a good job. Uh, Isaac's, you know, keep progressing from where he left off last year as he got a couple starts at the end of the year with JoJo being hurt. Uh, and he's fine-tuning all his technique and his assignment. Chris is learning it, but he's done a really good job. He learned fast. Chris is playing fast and physical. And then John Bullock's doing a nice job, too. Um, he's taking a lot of reps. Those guys have kind of all rotated through the ones and the twos. Uh, but he's done a nice job. He's fast. He's physical. Uh, he's a good football player. He just needs to get the mental side of it all cranked down so he's consistent all the time. And then, you know, hopefully we get Javen right back here in a, in a short time. And I'd love, love to see what he's doing running around out there. No, Grant Boot has played some um, with our threes right now. And then um, the, the secondary guys have, you know, we're trying to get them to see who can – manipulate into the corners and safety positions and somebody may come out of there certainly could uh, once we get that back in solidified oh he's handled it great uh, you hear his voice a lot more I mean last year obviously with Markel and Deontay and, and Cam back there you know he was 
he was doing a really nice job. He was the, the second guy rotating in. He got a chance to start a few games with Deontay out. This year, I think you've heard his voice. You've heard his leadership a lot more. He feels more comfortable in that position. I think he feels a lot more comfortable just with all his assignments where now he can, he can really start talking to the other people that are out there with him. And he's also holding some guys accountable, which is really good. Yeah, I mean, definitely Garrett, definitely Nick Henrich. Uh, you know, you, you want to see, you know, Luke Reimer, but he's not able to play, but he's done a nice job from the sideline. Uh, you know, I think Ty Robinson inside has done a really good job. Uh, Quentin Newsom's done a really good job. Um, you know, I think the, the Isaac Gifford has, has done a good job. I don't think he's quite there yet um, in that leadership role, but he's developing into those, those types of things. So I see a lot of these guys that are new guys playing with the first team, if you will, really trying to develop themselves. I don't know if we have a clear-cut guy yet, you know, other than Garrett's kind of established himself and Nick, but I think everybody else is doing a really good job in developing that leadership trait. Coach, how, how crucial is the defensive lineman just in defense like yours? Just, um, I know it's in the Big Ten, it's kind of important, but just in your own words, how crucial is it that you have production? Yeah, I think it doesn't matter what defense you play in, doesn't matter what league you play in. If you don't have good defensive linemen, you'll never be good on defense. So I think those guys are very, very critical in your success, no matter where you're at. If it's high school, whether it's the NFL, whether it's college, whether it's the Big Ten, ACC, SEC, it doesn't matter. Those guys are super, super critical to the success of the defense. How, how comfortable uh, at that position are you right now? Uh, I, I think we're comfortable with the players. It's just that we've got to see some separation. Some of those guys have got to go earn that spot. No, I thought it, I actually thought it was really good um, back and forth. You know, there's a couple times where, you know, defense came out hot and offense made a few errors, and then offense came storming back. And you know, they had a lot of good plays on us, went down and scored a touchdown, and then we bolted back in. But it was a great back and forth. I thought both sides. Uh, the thing I liked about the scrimmage was I thought it was fast and physical on both sides of the football. I don't, I didn't see any dumb stuff out there, penalty wise, or just guys doing dumb stuff like it's a game. It's not practice now. And then I just thought both both sides were operating really good at certain points in time, you know what I mean? And sometimes it was kind of a stalemate, which is okay too, which is good players on good players. But I thought I thought both groups did a really nice job, offense and defense. All right. See you guys.